Hi, this is Mr. Adams and uh, from Middle High School, and this is a video on naming ionic compounds using the stock system. Um, I previously did one on writing the formulas, so this should be familiar with you. Okay, uh, the first rule, we have to determine whether the compound is binary or ternary. Now, once we know it's ionic, metal, non-metal, okay, or polyatomic ion with uh, monatomic ions, we then figure out if it's binary or ternary. Once again, binary simply means two different elements together. Ternary for us will mean three or more different elements. If it's ternary, we'll simply then go to table E, very, very, uh, very important. Okay, go to table E and find that polyatomic ion. As we discussed before, you don't want to make up names for these things. All the names and charges are listed there for you to find. Okay, now these two last two rules here, three and four, I'll show you in examples. Now it just so happens that reverse crisscross actually works most of the time. Okay, but I want to teach you the way of simple doing this calculation because it will help us later on when we go to chemistry two and we get the topic of um, redox and oxidation numbers. You do have to calculate the um, oxidation number of certain elements using this technique. So I'm saying to myself, why not learn it now? Okay, so we're moving on. Okay, now if you have CrBr3 and you're asked to name it, okay, once again, we're going to determine if it's binary or ternary. Um, we see that there's Cr right here. That's one element. Okay, and we have Br right here. That's another element. So we have just two different types of elements. Therefore, it's binary. From the rules that we did before, you can flip back in your notes in terms of naming um, ionic and covalent ionic compounds. Okay, the second guy, the negative guy, the negative ion, Br, gets an I-D-E ending. Okay, so we know Cr from experience, going on our reference tables, our periodic tables, is chromium. You write that down, okay? Now, this is the tricky part. Um, some folks are kind of flustered when they are doing the math, but the math is really, really simple. All we're saying is that we have three bromines, each with a charge of negative one. Um, for the non-metal guys, you just simply go to the top number, and that will represent the charge or oxidation state of the non-metal. Okay, if you have a bunch of different oxidation states for your non-metal, you don't panic, you go to the top number, and the top number for bromine is negative one and three times negative one will give you negative three okay this is a neutral compound so everything has to add up to zero so the question is what plus negative three what plus negative three gives you zero and the answer should be yes positive three okay all right and that positive three okay goes as your Roman numeral for chromium. Now, since we only have one chromium, and if you divide by one, it gives you the same number, the answer will be chromium, Roman numeral three, bromide. Okay, remember your ID ending for your binary guys. Okay, so now what you're gonna do, you're gonna pause the video, and you'll do this one, CO3P2 right here, and, um, I'll give you the solution in two seconds. Okay, um, we know from experience, CO is cobalt. You look carefully on table S if you can, if you don't know from memory. Okay, and you write cobalt down. Alrighty. P, all right, and CO represent that they're just two monoatomic ions coming together to form an ion compound. They're bi it's also binary, so that P will get to ID ending. So phosphorus will turn into phosphide. Okay, we went over this in class, knowing your different endings. There's no particular um, set system. You just have to memorize them. So when you use them more than once, they stick on your fingertips and you you'll know them. So don't panic with that. Okay, now... If you look at P, phosphorus, the top number is negative 3. So, once again, 2 times negative 3 will give us negative 6. Okay. Now, what plus negative 6 gives us 0? 
positive 6. Okay? Now, the thing is... No, the thing is, the positive 6 goes for these three cobalts, okay? So if three cobalts are positive 6, the value for one of them will be positive 6 over 2, over 3, excuse me, which is 2. Okay, so once again, you've got three cobalts giving you positive 6. The value for one of them would be 2. So you put a Roman numeral 2 right there, and that's your answer. Cobalt 2 phosphide. Okay, um, this guy over here now. We look at it, we see we have nickel, we have carbon, we have oxygen, we have more than two things, therefore it's ternary. Once again, we don't panic, we go straight to our handy dandy table E, which is going to help us with that. We scan it carefully, we see that we have oxalate right about here. Okay, good. All right, C204, you do some matching. Okay, and the thing with the nice thing about polyatomic ion names, you don't change their name. Okay, it is what it is. So you write that down someplace. Oxalate. Okay, and Ni is nickel. Ni is nickel. Now, let's try it again. We have three. Oxalates, right? Each with a charge of negative 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Okay? So what plus negative 6 gives you 0? Positive 6. Okay. So positive 6 is for nickel, right? It just so happens we have two nickels. So the value for one nickel would be there you go, 3, okay, because positive 6 over 2 equals to 3, okay, and that Roman numeral 3 goes there, all right, so the answer there simply is nickel 3 oxalate, all right, okay, so we're moving on, once again, once again you're going to pause this presentation and you'll do these two, and I'll go over them with you in a second. Okay, guys. All right. We're winding down. We check this guy right here. We have copper. We have sulfur. We have oxygen. We see that we have more than two things. We go to table E. Okay, I'm going to flip back here for a second. I flip back. I see. Okay. Hmm, there we go. Okay, thiosulfate. All right. So, once again, you don't change its name. You write it down. Thiosulfate. Okay, so I've named my polyatomic ion part because I knew it was ternary. We know from experience C was copper. You write that down because the first guy never gets changed. All right, in terms of naming. So you write copper down. All right. Now we know copper has more than one oxidation state. Remember, we're doing for ternary compounds. All these guys have more than one oxidation state. So we must, must, must indicate which oxidation state it's in using Roman numerals. Now, once again, we only have one thiosulfate, okay? And thiosulfates have a charge of minus 2. So 1 times minus 2 gives us negative 2. Now, what plus, people, negative 2 gives us 0? Answer should be positive 2. No calculators, please. All right. Okay. Now, this positive 2 represents two coppers, okay? Right here, we have two coppers at positive two. So, we just simply divide by this two right here into that two right there, and two into two gives us one, all right? And that's our final answer, okay? Copper one thiosulfate. Now, once again, guys, it's a nice, simple system. They all follow basic same pattern. If you see more than two elements, you don't panic. You know you have to look on your um, reference table at table E. Okay, and you go from there. For the next one, okay, once again, you recognize you have TI, you have carbon, and you have nitrogen. 
Okay, so you see this stuff. I'm going to look on table E. So let's flip over here for a second. You do a quick scan. You notice that you have CN over here. Okay, and it's cyanide. Okay, so you see to yourself, okay, I don't have to change anything about it. I'm going to write that down someplace. So you write cyanide down. Okay, now TI, if you look it up, is titanium. And all we need now is our Roman numerals, and we're basically done. Now, four, we have four cyanides, and each of them carry a charge of negative one. Four times negative one is negative four. Okay. Now, what plus negative four gives you zero? Now, calculators again, positive four. That positive four represents titanium, which is only one of them. So we put the value for in terms of Roman numerals in the space. Okay, and it just so happens to be here. So you put titanium for cyanide. Okay, and that's done. All right, and as always, excuse my handwriting. I'm gonna work on that. Okay, you try this one, guys, and we'll wrap it up with call it a day. Okay, pause it, and then we'll go over it in a second. Okay, folks, um, this guy has copper in it and sulfur in it. Just two things, it's binary. So we know the sulfur will get an I, D, E ending. So you write it down someplace. Sulfide, okay? All binary things, the second non-metal guy, he gets a I, D, E ending, all right? You write copper down, see you. Now here, you don't wanna use reverse crisscross because they're in a one-to-one -one ratio, yes, right? But the thing is, sulfurs, if you look carefully on, on your periodic table, sulfurs carry a charge of negative two. There's one of them, so one times negative two gives us negative two, right? Okay, and since it has to be a neutral compound, it has to add a zero. What plus negative two gives us zero? Okay, that will be positive two, and that positive two for the one copper goes there. It's represented by Roman numeral two. Okay, and that's it. Copper to sulfide. Okay, so what you can do with these guys, you can make a simple rule. You can say, okay, if the subscripts are not the same, I can do reverse crisscross. And if the subscripts are the same, I use my negative, and it will be equivalent in terms of positive for the um, positive ion. And you go from there. So that's a bit of a shorthand. But I taught you this longer way in terms of multiplication and addition to find the neutral compound, because that will help us later on when we go to chemistry 2 and do redox and oxidation numbers. And as always, hard work and sacrifice equals success. you got to study to get smarter. And I'll see you later. I'll be giving more you more videos. All right, take care. Hope it helps.